Hi, I'm scientist Kate. I live in Seattle, Washington with my cat Carter and my dog Birdie. I love to travel to all kinds of places in the world, especially places with interesting weather and climate, like these hot, dry deserts I visited last year. This lesson is for grade three. It's called weather and climate. If you're not a third grader, that's okay. We love to have relatives, siblings, parents, neighbors, everybody who's hanging around the house go on our science adventure with us. So this lesson is chapter one, lesson one. And for this lesson, you're gonna need two things, something to write with and something to write on. I have my handy dandy purple pen and I have a notepad that I just found in a drawer. I'm sure whatever you have around your house is gonna work great. So get ready, let's go. Okay, to start off, I wanna introduce you to this group called the Wildlife Protection Organization. This group is totally dedicated to preserving orangutans in their natural habitat and by establishing reserves. Do you know very much about orangutans? I don't. I'm really hoping that along the way, I'm gonna learn some cool facts about them and where they live. So let's start out. Orangutans live on only two islands in the whole world. That's crazy. These islands have a special habitat that is perfect for orangutans to live in. And these islands are called Sumatra and Borneo. You can see them right here on the map with the two red dots. And those islands are on the complete other side of the world from us. Take a look at this photograph above us. This photograph is showing some of the habitat from Sumatra and Borneo where orangutans really live. What do you notice about the way that this land looks? I'll give you a second to look at it and make observations. Okay, what did you notice about it? I noticed that it has a lot of plants and trees and it looks like kind of a jungle. Did you notice anything about the weather? Well, yeah, we're not there. We can't really feel what it feels like, but do you think it looks hot or cold? I think it looks hot. It definitely doesn't look cold and snowy or like a place where penguins live. What do you think about the amount of rain? Does it look like a place where it rains a lot or a place where it's dry? Hmm. To me, it looks like a place where it probably rains a lot because there's lots of plants and plants need water to live. Actually, according to my notes, Sumatra and Borneo are the perfect place for orangutans to live because they are really hot places and really rainy places. So there are hotter places in the world and there are rainier places in the world, but these two places have the perfect level of rain and heat for orangutans to live and thrive. So again, in the wild, orangutans only live on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. These are some of the hottest, rainiest places in the world. There are places on earth that are hotter than those islands and places that are rainier, but Borneo and Sumatra are special because of their combination of heat and raininess. Now, unfortunately, these um, islands, the forests in these islands that we just looked at, um, they're being destroyed and they're being destroyed by people. Shocking, right? So the reason that these habitats are being destroyed is because farmers are clearing all of the trees out of the land to plant these little short trees that produce a substance called palm oil. And the reason why they're doing that is because palm oil is a very important ingredient in a lot of the household things we have around the house that you probably recognize. Things like shampoo, toothpaste, and dish soap. And unfortunately, orangutans can't live in these little short shrubby bushes and, and palm trees. They need tall trees so that they can swing around and hide from predators and find their food. So this habitat just isn't for them anymore. So the Wildlife Protection Organization needs our help. They want to start an orangutan reserve. If you don't know what a reserve is, it's a, it's a special area where animals can come and live and they can be protected. So hunters can't hunt them and farmers can't come in and clear out their habitat. So the Wildlife Protection Organization wants to start an orangutan reserve on one of these three islands. The islands are called Ark Island, Creek Island, and Blue Island. And I'm gonna give you a sec just to look at these islands and see what you notice about how they look. Make some initial observations. I'm gonna to look too. Hmm. What 
did you notice about these islands? Was it hard for you to tell these islands apart? They all kind of look the same to me. They all have lots of green area. They all have lots of water nearby. And they all look like they have sunny, hot types of climates. So I feel like I need more information, don't you? Well, on this journey that we're going to take together, Throughout the course of this weather and climate unit, we are going to be gathering all sorts of data and information to help us make a decision about where the Wildlife Protection Organization should have their orangutan reserve. Along the way, we're going to be acting like meteorologists. Do you know what a meteorologist is? You've maybe heard this word before. It's a type of scientist who studies the weather. And what they do is they don't just go on the news and point to a map and tell you where the weather is going to be because they have some sort of special powers. No, they use science. And the way they do that is they collect data and they analyze it and look for patterns. And then they use those patterns to make a prediction. We're going to be acting as meteorologists throughout this whole unit. So let's add the word meteorologist to our vocabulary list. A meteorologist is a scientist who studies and predicts the weather. So throughout the course of this weather and climate unit, we're going to try to figure out how can meteorologists predict the weather for a particular place in time? That is a huge question to try to figure out. So we're going to break it down into a bite-sized piece just for this chapter that we're studying right now, chapter one. So the chapter one question we're going to work on answering is, which island's weather would be best for orangutans? We're going to need some more information, I think. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is we're going to do a visualization. So when you hear the word weather, what do you picture in your mind? I'm going to give you a second to do that visualization, and I'm going to do it too. So I'm thinking of the word weather. What comes to your mind? Ready? Okay, did you think of some weather words? Here's the two I thought of. I thought of rain and snow. These are two types of weather that are really easy to observe. So they came to my mind really fast. Did you think of rain or snow? Maybe you did. Did you think of something else that isn't rain or snow? What do you think of? You can tell me. Hmm, very interesting. I like that we came up with some stuff that's the same and some stuff that's different. Okay, so rain and snow and whatever things you came up with, we didn't get all of the different types of weather. So we're gonna do a quick activity and this is where you need your pen and your pad. Are you ready? Or whatever you're writing with. Okay, I'm gonna play this video. It's about two minutes long. And during this video, I want you to use your powers of observation. Now, when we observe, remember, we're using all of our five senses. So for this video, we're not really gonna be doing any tasting or smelling or touching, but we are definitely going to be looking and we're going to be listening. So I'm going to play the video. And while it's playing, I want you to make as many observations about the weather in the video as you can. As a matter of fact, let's make this interesting. If you have somebody with you right now watching, I want you to have a contest to see who can come up with the most observations from the video. I'm also going to be writing mine over here. Are you ready? Let's do it.
Okay, did you come up with a list? All right, here's what I want you to do with your list. I'm gonna read mine, you look at yours, and let's compare and see if we had some stuff the same and some stuff different when it comes to our observations. Okay, here's my list, ready? Sunny, cloudy, windy, warm, cold, rainy, hurricane, stormy, cool, hail, snowy. Those were all the observations that I made. Did you make any observations that were different from the ones that I made? Cool. All right, now here's what I want you to do next. Listen carefully to these directions. Here's my list. I'm gonna take my list and I'm gonna classify my words into groups. Oh my gosh, what does classify mean again? Oh, that's right, it means to put words into groups. So I'm gonna look at my list and I want you to look at your list and I'm gonna put my words into groups in ways that make sense to me, according to words that I think go together. And I want you to do the same thing, ready? If you have, if you're watching this online, go ahead and pause and give yourself plenty of time to sort your words. I'm just gonna take a second right here and do it. Okay, here's how I sorted my words. In the first box, I put cold, warm, and cool. Can you guess how I sorted my words? Yeah, I sorted them by temperature. So I took all of the words that have to do with things being hot or cold or being able to be measured, and I put them into one box together. My second group is words that have to do with precipitation, like rainy, snowy, hail, stormy, hurricane. All of those, to me, had to do with water coming down out of the sky. My third group, sunny, cloudy, and windy. Hmm, can you guess? These words are actually other conditions. So just ways that weather can be happening outside that don't have to do with temperature or precipitation specifically. All right, now you heard me use the word precipitation. You may have heard this word before. It means water that falls to the earth as rain, snow, sleet, or hail. All of those are examples of precipitation. So thinking about weather, weather means what the conditions are in a place at a given time. So what is the weather like outside today in terms of temperature, precipitation, and wind? Well, in order to know that, I have to make an observation. So here in Seattle, I'm gonna go outside right now and I'm gonna look and see what's going on with the temperature, with the precipitation and the wind. I'm gonna take my notebook and I'm gonna take my pen and I'm gonna go make that observation. And right now, if you're watching, you can either pause the video or you can just keep watching. And I want you to go outside with permission of a parent or guardian. And I want you to take note of what is the temperature, precipitation and wind. How would you describe those three things? Are you ready? Here I go. I'm back. Okay, so I made my observation and here's what I came up with. So on my data table that I just made, there's types of weather and then I'm telling you how that type of weather is right now in Seattle. So for the temperature, it's actually pretty cool. I checked my thermometer outside on my back deck and it says that it's 55 degrees Fahrenheit, which is not hot by any means, and but it's definitely not freezing cold like it would be if it was gonna snow. So I'm gonna call it cool. For precipitation, surprisingly for Rain City, Seattle, it's not raining. It's actually kind of sunny outside. It's pretty nice. For wind, there's a light breeze. So I didn't notice my hair going crazy or anything out there, but it wasn't totally still. I saw a little bit of movement in the trees and that's how I came to the observation that I was feeling a light breeze. What was the weather like where you are? You can tell me. 
Mm -hmm. Mm. Cool. So if you're in the Seattle area, your weather was probably quite a bit like mine. But if you're some in some other place, who knows, maybe it's different. All right, so coming back to our phenomenon and our storyline here about the Wildlife Protection Organization, I want to just think for a second about how could a meteorologist, somebody who studies weather, help us make a decision about which island could be the best for the orangutan reserve? I'm going to chew on that until I see you next time. So for now, I'm signing off. This is Scientist Kate, and I'll see you in lesson two. Bye.